Hello and welcome to Web Factory 2010. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to work with a backup ADS connector inside Web Factory Studio. So let's get started. I'm gonna open my test project in Web Factory Studio by clicking the login button. Now, in Studio, to add the new connector, navigate to the server under the server list, right click select new connector and select the back of ADS connector. Now once the connector is added to our connector list you will see the connector configuration panel. The connector configuration section is divided in two tabs the devices tab that is active right now and the signals tab. In the devices tab you can have up to 200 devices linked using the back of ADS connector. Now to add a new device Click on the New button in the toolbar. The Devices tab also offers us the possibility to copy an existing device. Now this is useful when having multiple devices in the same ADS network using the same symbol list. And for copying a device it is enough to select the device and click the Copy button. As you can see you can select the amount of copies you want for this device and click insert to have the copies over here. Now I'm gonna delete these copies and go on with our connector configuration. The devices configuration table has the following parameters. Now we have the name which is the unique device name. This serves as a device name for the signal prefix. We have the ADS net ID, the device address inside the ADS network. We have the ADS port, which is the ADS communication port of the device. We have the poll rate, which is the time interval in milliseconds for polling the ADS device. We have the ADS timeout, which is the timeout of communication operations and it is expressed in milliseconds. And of course we have the ADS time suspend. Now this is the suspend time after the communication errors. Now all these options inside our device configuration table are available in the device details panel. The device details panel allows us to have a quick view of the device tab properties. The device tab allows us to use three different import methods. Import a configuration which allows us to import a complete TPY configuration. The second option allows us to import from the TPY configuration only the web factory symbols. And the third option is update configuration. And this updates the existing list of symbols from the back of ADS connectors. Now the symbols can be deleted manually in order to optimize the communication load. In the Signals tab, all the signals of the PLC connected via back of ADS connector can be seen. We now have no signals inside, but we're gonna import some signals. And I'm gonna import configuration web factory symbols only. And why? Because I wanna partially import my configuration and then I wanna show you how the update works. So I'm gonna import configuration. I'm gonna select my TPY file. And as you can see, I have successfully imported six signals. Now, in order to update the configuration, I'm gonna click the import button and select update configuration. I'm gonna select my TPY file and as you can see the update configuration window has appeared. Now, in this window we can see exactly what changes will be made to our connector configuration. And we see here we have inserted items. We, we can recognize them because of their color, which is green. We can have also updated items or deleted items. But in our case, I'm gonna select all or press the select all button and I'm gonna save changes. And you can see that I have successfully modified six items. I have inserted six new items, I have updated no new items and I have not deleted any items. So I'm gonna click OK and click Close. And as you can see I have the first batch of signals that I have imported with Web Factory symbols only and I have the update that I've done using the import update configuration utility. 
Now the back of ADS connector provides special signals used to monitor the connection with the connected ADS device. For example, PLC1 dot watchdog. This is a special signal for the ADS connector. Now these signals need to be declared only as web factory signals within the back of ADS connector corresponding signal group. The signals are updated by the back of ADS connector once per second, counting the number of seconds since the last successful communication. Now if the time to access the device is 10 seconds, the associated watchdog signal will have the value 10. If the communication with the device is possible, the value of the signal will be 0. Now, we have configured our ADS connector, we have configured our device and our signals over here, but now it's time to create the web factory signals for our back of ADS connector. And to do that I'm gonna click on the back of ADS connector and of course save the changes and I'm gonna right click on it and create a new group because I will need this new group to get the signals inside. Now we have our group, I'm gonna select another one just to have options and I'm gonna right click my connector and select browse connector. Now the browse connector window allows us to select the signals we want to insert inside the web factory studio. The signal groups can be created as I have showed you previously from our connector or can be created from the destination group. If for example I want to import these signals in one of my two groups I can select the group and click add but I can also create a third group from here and if I add my signals I will be prompted with this question so this group 3 does not exist and if I want to create this group yes of course I want to create this group and I'm gonna close and you can see the group is added under my connector and the signals are inside my group now this is all about the back of ADS connector configuration and usage inside Web Factory 2010 Studio. I'm gonna see you next time when we're gonna talk about more interesting features of Web Factory Studio. So see you soon.